Hello everypony, the one and only Dark Shadow here again with yet another video for all of you. I have a very special guest for you today. Someone that I have mentioned in a few videos of mine in the past, and now I've decided to formally introduce him to all of you. Everypony, this is Dat Airsoft Bruni. How you doing all? So, as I've mentioned in past videos, that that Airsoft Brony is going to be my official co-reader. He is an airsofting brony, as his name would suggest. And I'm fortunate to have him here with me today. So I'm here. I'm, I'm uh, you know, glad to be here as well. You know, I've been dying, you know, to actually sit here and actually, you know, talk to you, you know, in person. I know we've talked over the phone and stuff like that. We've talked to over like you know, in the uh, online and stuff, in the forums and such like that, and that's how we met. And then, uh, you know, we started talking more, you know, seriously. And then eventually, we started actually talking on the phone. And yep. I was surprised, you know, you live so close here, you know, to uh, to me. And uh, you know, I finally just figured, you know, hey, might as well meet up, you know, since I'm planning on, uh, you know, participating in your uh, readings. Yeah. Um. Like I said, uh, I'm really looking forward to doing, you know, the reading, stuff like that. Um, I've been definitely, with the material you have been uh, giving me, you know, I've been definitely trying to work my voice, you know, into what, I, what you need me to be doing. And I believe that this coming, you know, to be doing this will definitely add a, uh, a totally new dynamic, you know, to your readings. Yeah, from what I understand, that you are a uh, what you call a brony voice contractor, I believe. Yes, um, I have done a few works in the past that uh, that other other bronies have asked me to do locally. Um, I've done several voices. I've done a uh, a Big Mac once. I've done a uh, I do a good Queen Chrysalis as well. As, as strange as that may sound, because it, obviously that's a female voice. No, but, but most of them are female voices, so it's not that right, hard. Right, right. Uh, but it's just the, the, uh, the able to imitate the synthesized voice, you know, that I could do. And without the synthesizing. You know. Right, exactly. So it kind of cuts a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of equipment out. So definitely I was, uh, I was contracted to do some work like that. Um, I was also contracted um, by adding, you know, as far as reviews go, you know, because not only do uh, I do voice work, I also do, uh, you know, uh, philosophy kind of things where I would be in discussions with other bronies and, uh, you know, talk about different topics. All right, um, I have to ask, what are you wearing right now? <laughs> it's funny you mention that. Um, as with my subscribers, um, in all of my videos, whether it's a uh, airsoft review or a uh, a pony a pony video, I am always wearing a one article of uh, tactical gear. As you can see, like I have my uh, base jump helmet here on here. I got my goggles on. If you even look, I even got like uh, I got my brony tab on here. You know and. Uh, Definitely, it's definitely, you know, a thing where a lot of airsofters like to uh, wear their equipment. You know, I do it for both both kinds of my videos. Are uh, you like the only brony that does airsofting, or is there others out there like you? Yes, actually it's funny because I've met maybe two uh, airsofting bronies in my games that I've gone to. Um, one of them, I've had a very lengthy uh, conversation, you know, how'd you get started in uh, the fandom, how'd you get started, uh, what, you know, what do you like of the fandom. He showed me a lot of his artwork right on, the, right on his phone, right there on the field. Um, what was, uh, you know, interesting was that he, uh, let's say, he, uh, he drew uh, Rainbow Dash's cutie mark on, the, on his, the stock of his rifle. And that day, I wore a uh, a U.S. Army Desert Camouflage uh, BDU, which I had sewn a uh, a Rainbow Dash uh, cutie mark 
on the sleeve, and that's what that's what caught his eye, and he came over to me and said, "Hey, you like My Little Pony too?" And I was like, "Yeah," and uh, that's how that conversation started. What's it like to uh, mix both of these together, airsofting and My Little Pony? Well, it's a. I would say it's. You find yourself, like I say with most bronies, you find your niche, you know, in, uh, you know, in the fandom, and it's definitely. A definitely a two-sided, uh, you know, of the spectrum. You got this really hardcore, action-packed, uh, you know, military simulation game, where you've got ex-military, ex-police, even you know, active duty police and military personnel, uh, countless other you know individuals themselves. So, you got right there a very aggressive uh, community. Um, but yet you, me, and other bronies out there, who are so, you know, involved in the airsoft community, we try and, um, integrate both worlds into our, uh, you know, into our uniforms. Like, for instance, like, like I have here on my helmet, I have the brony tab in multicam, which I had custom made on my, uh, desert camouflage, like I just explained, the patch there. I even have on my, uh, main plate carrier, a, uh, a Rainbow Dash um, high-speed low-drag patch that I found off a, a website. It was the only Velcro patch that they had, and I liked it, and I bought it, and I wear that on my vest constantly. It's one of my favorite patches. Now, the only Velcro, you say, that, they, that they've made ever? So far, yes. Although, <laughs> fandom, I'm disappointed. <laughs> Definitely, I am too. There are a few uh, manufacturers out there that do it, but maybe I've only seen one or two, even three of these patches that were actually commercially sold. Everything else was custom done by the airsofter, you know, themselves. Kind of like the one I'm wearing now. You know, I actually had it custom done by a, uh, you know, an embroidery, you know, artist. And, uh, that's how that came to be, you know, but that's pretty much how it usually is. There's not that many out there. Like I said, I'm surprised, you know, with <clears throat> so much creative um, pieces of equipment out there, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> surprised that there's not that many. Yeah, um, that's another thing. So even though there's no patches or stuff like that, you also find your ways you know, other ways of expressing, you know, your love for the fandom, you know, in this game. Like I said the, uh, earlier, the guy uh, drew the uh, Rainbow Dash's cutie mark on the stock, and for me, I have a couple of patches that I had done, and I even have on my, uh, on my plate carrier, I have a keychain of uh, Pinkie Pie, you know, one of those little stuffed animal ones mm -hmm. that I got in Walmart. Uh... I have that clipped onto my uh, my vest, you know, and I get a lot of looks from that, you know, but that's just my way of expressing it. Yeah, we all get looks, I guess, or, you know, some type of... Yeah, some kind of retribution, but you know what, you know what, it's to the point where I know it's out there, um, people know I like it, and honestly, I haven't had much, uh, you know, negative feedback from it. They either ask me curiously, or they just simply, uh, you know, let me be. They don't even ask. Hmm. Yeah, I'm more on that creative side. Um, okay, unfortunately, um, with this crap cr camera that I have, we only have ten minutes per segment, and we're almost running out of time, so... We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. <laughs> and we're back. Dark Shadow here, sitting with my co-reader and soon-to-be partner in crime, Dat Airsoft Brownie. How you doing? Um, reason why I, we're sitting here today is not just to formally introduce you guys to my soon-to-be co-reader, but we're also going to be talking a little bit about the upcoming Season 4 of My Little Pony. To date on... Di nah. Uh, on the date of this video being released, there's only like one day left. Yeah. So it's released officially. Can't wait. And we decided to just talk a little bit about like how we feel about it, uh, what we expect, and stuff like that. So, would you like to go first? or? 
You could go. I mean, we, we pretty much have, like, the same, you know, uh, opinions as far as that goes. We're both definitely, you know, dying for this to come. Well, you, maybe, but... Oh, <laughs> uh, sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, and for some of these, those of you who don't know, I'm, uh... The anticipation for me is kind of, like, mute right now. I guess it's because I spoiled myself rotten with this, you know, seeing the clips and getting constant teases on Equestria Daily and other sites go yeah, over yeah. and over and over and eventually it just, you know, went on the down low. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to watch it. It just means that I'm not as you're hyped. Not, you're not as hyped because you spoiled it for yourself pretty right. much. I don't know what's going to happen, as, but I just, you know, couldn't help it. All right? so it's in my face. What am right, I gonna right, do? yeah. I've only watched maybe one or two uh, upcoming clips that they released and maybe a couple of press releases, but that was about it. Because I was waiting for this, you know, for a long time now, and I really, really didn't want to do it. I know out of habit I've done it with movies, you know, big time movies like Avengers and stuff like that. Yeah. That was coming out, all these teasers and featurettes, you know, and stuff that's released on YouTube and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I really ruined the movie for myself, and you know what? I'm not going to do it to uh, season four. Yeah, um, so... From what you've established about the pilot, um, we're going to try to keep this spoiler-free for all of you. Um, what is your take on the season one, the season four pilot? Well, like I said, I haven't much, you know, I haven't listened to it much, but by what I've heard of it, um, it's definitely something that I'm looking forward to. Um, definitely, we want to, with uh, the last episode of Magical Mystery Cure, we were uh, definitely thrown into a new dynamic uh, with Twilight being an alicorn now and plus a princess. Even then, and then even afterwards, we got even more information from Equestria, Equestria Girls. So, uh, you know, definitely I was... Um, I'm definitely waiting for what's going to be her new... her challenges and, uh, you know, how she's going to, you know attack this, so to speak, uh, you know, how to do, how to be a princess, and also continue to be friends, you know, with her friends. I agree with you on a lot of what you've said, but, you know, I've stated this, like, on Equestria Daily, via my comments and everything, that just a part of me, me personally, I feel that they're starting to drift away from their target audience, which is, you know, a younger demographic. And they're making it more towards us. I mean, it just seems so chaotic and apocalyptic. I mean, sure, you had, like, the Season 2 pilot, which was similar to that. But that at least was, like, humorous. It had, it had a lot of humor. It had a right, lot of right, kid-friendly yeah. things. Mm -hmm. But just from what I've, you know, I've some spoiled rotten. But from what everything that I've been piecing together, it just seems like it's going to be a much darker season pilot. Yeah, um, right. I've uh, I definitely got that um, that image too. There is a lot of dark imagery. There's could, you know, there's a lot of definitely a lot of challenge in this. Um, I do agree with you the fact that they are that it seems like they're, you know, adding the uh, you know the the fandom to its uh, target audience. But you know what? It's still quite, you know, young to the point where, you know, it, it'll still attract the target audience, but it will also include us as well, you know, the Brony fandom as well. But yes, I do agree with you that it does seem like it's straying away, um, but although it, it's like almost like a welcome uh, stray, at least for me anyway. Yeah, it's just me personally, I just feel that them straying away from their target audience I kind of feel like that's going to probably be a bad thing for the series. Why? Because, you know, you just think back to when we became bronies, when we fell in love with the fandom. You know, we didn't like it because it was targeted towards us. We liked it because it wasn't targeted towards us. Right, right. It was targeted to the younger audience. And if they try to make it for, like, an older audience, you know, it's going to lose that touch. I mean, I know that I don't think you've read... Like the synopsis is the uh, no, I didn't, no. mix of the future episodes. You know, I have because I'm a freak. But 
from what I've established, it seems like they're, you know, starting to make it for an older audience. I mean, not entirely. I mean, I'm from what I've seen, again, going to keep it spoiler free, from what I've seen, it just, it does seem like it's going to maintain um, its normal demographic of the younger audience, but it just feels like they're starting to make it more for us, and I just kind of feel like that might be a bad thing. It just seems like also that they also are, uh, you know, making the storylines a lot more complex, um, you know, not just, uh, not just a very simple you know, problem and resolution to the problem, but it also seems like you would need more time to resolve these problems, and that's exactly, you know, I would like to see that in especially the pilots, you know, in the, in the finales, um, where the problem is not resolved quickly, or the problem is overwhelming for the main characters. I uh, know, like I said, I'm looking forward towards that. But, you know, as far as the, you know, normal, you know, in-between episode, you know, uh, f you know pilot and uh, finales, the, the regular uh, episode should stay the same way. Yeah. Um, I know, again, you've never seen any of this, but, you know, what is your feelings on Twilight herself being an alicorn? You know, that was like a big shocker for most of us. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I'm just curious, how did you feel when you first found out about this? And how do you think that this is going to affect the future of MLP? Well, when we got first... Well, it was when I started learning about uh, what Magical Mystery Cure was planning to be. Um, I was, at first, very you know, cautious. I was a little afraid, you know, what's going to happen now? They're going to change the whole, the whole, you know, storyline from, you know, like a normal unicorn to now an alicorn. This is, you're bringing up the level now to where uh, Twilight is at the same level as Cadence, Princess, Princess Celestia, and Princess Luna. You're definitely raising the bar here. And I believe that a lot of us were very concerned about that. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I've gotten used to the idea, you know, and I definitely, you know, would like to see what comes out of it. Um, it's funny that you say that you're cautious about it. I'm, I'll, I'll be honest, I hated the concept when I first heard it. I mean, I was like, no, absolutely not. But then, you know, I guess as time went on, I guess I slowly kind of got used to it. Right, right. It was the same. It's the same idea with uh, the whole Equestria Girls uh, fiasco. Yeah, that was huge. <laughs> that was. I was definitely one hundred percent against the idea when it first came out. Yeah, they leaked the wrong photos. Let's just say that. <laughs> oh my God, I remember those photos. God, yeah. I had nightmares. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, but definitely, it was the same dynamic. Um, I was afraid of it. I was scared of it. I did not like it. I was 100% against it, but then as when I saw the movie for the first time, I was totally changed 100%. I loved the story, I loved what they did with it, and you know what? I, I feel the same way about uh, Twilight being an alicorn. Yeah, it's kind of like that read it and weep episode, don't knock until you try it. Exactly, and, exactly. Alright, so we're almost out of time once again, so we'll be right back after another word from our sponsor. And once again, we're back. Dark Shadow here with Dad Airsoft Ronnie. How you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, we were just talking about uh, what we feel about the season four premiere. So now let's get into like what we think, what we would like to see in season four. Um, again, I'm spoiled. I'll give you that, but I'll try to keep it spoiler free and away from what. Some of you already know, so yeah. I'll, I mean, like I'll I said, stray away from that. Yeah, I, I like I said, I, I'm trying not to, you know, very hard not to look at the spoilers and stuff like that. So I really don't, you know, want to hear anything about that. Yeah, I spoiled myself wrong with season three, so yeah, I, I don't want to do that. So I'm definitely you know, really. If wanting... I really think about it, I think I spoiled myself wrong with season two too. <laughs> the only one that wasn't a spoiler was season one, and I jumped in right in the like at the end of it. So I, I came in, I came into it. 
at the, uh, I believe in the middle of season two, but I didn't start watching it from there. I started it from, uh, you know, definitely from episode one. So definitely, and I, you know, catch, caught up to the fandom. So technically season three was my first full, uh, you know, uh, season. All right, so what do you expect from season four? What do you hope to see? Definitely, I was I was actually compiling a list because I'm on uh, this the, this discussion forum uh, website, and a lot of this was uh, discussed. Where you know what we, what did we expect from you know what do we want to see in season four? And definitely, I want to and uh, these were maybe the top reasons. Um, I definitely want to see how Twilight adjusts to royalty. Definitely that because in society when uh, royal when a new person becomes a royal you know a royal it's totally different it's like I would I would compare it you know to some to most of the people uh, the first day of high school or the first day of college it's you're going from a lower level to almost an elite level you know overnight so definitely I want to see how Twilight adjusts to it. Um, will she be uh, moving away from Ponyville? Will she be seeing you know less of her friends, or will definitely you know they would be accompanying her on her adventures? But definitely, you got to remember she's a royal now. So I want to you know see what uh, comes of that. Anything you you, you uh, want to see from other characters besides Twilight? Definitely, definitely a uh, a big plus that I want to see from uh, other characters is I want to see more of uh, Princess Luna, okay. and that's coming. That's strange coming from me, um, because like I said, we've discussed this before. Um, I'm definitely a pro Celestia uh, advocate, and I'm pro Luna, so it's like. We're definitely, yeah. It's like, like fire and ice in this room right now. <laughs> oil and water, yeah. Um, but yes, I would, I do definitely want to see more of Princess Luna. Um, yeah. One of my favorite episodes is uh, Luna Eclipsed, and it has to do predominantly with uh, Luna. And I enjoyed that episode. I enjoyed, I actually enjoyed a lot of episodes where Luna was featured in. So definitely I want to see more of uh, Princess Luna. Um... Definitely that much. Uh, I want to see more of other characters' development, possibly even their history, if anything like that. Because definitely, uh, in the forums where I have, I have a lot of uh, questions where they would uh, talk about, you know, where did they come from? Uh, where uh, <laughs> a big one is, uh, where are Scootaloo's parents? <laughs> <laughs> I'm begging. I'm practically mentally begging DHX to make that because I'm just annoyed to the hilt that Scootaloo is an orphan or she's a runaway who sleeps in the clubhouse. You know, I don't believe any of that. All they have to do pretty much is say one word. She just has to mention it. She just has to say, oh, I have to go somewhere with my parents. And there you go. Her parents are canon. You can shut up with all that other dark and sad stuff. You know, go change your fanfics and stuff. You know? <laughs> right, exactly. Um, that's the same exact thing. Also, I would like to um, perhaps hear more of uh, Applejack's family. Um, yeah. I definitely uh, recently uh, wa uh, read the uh, comic Core of the Apple. Uh, yeah, that, I've, I've heard, I read like the first one. I didn't read the rest. I, I read all what uh, the artist has done so far and it almost brought me to tears. And I don't want that comic to become uh, canon as far as we or what we call head canon but definitely as far as that goes I would like to see you know or at least hear mention you know what has happened to Applejack's parents well, we, we know what happened according to our beneficent overlord Lauren Faust but you know just more about exactly what happened what's what actually transpired to you know cause the, the death of her parents um, on the same note, I would also like to see more of, like, Fluttershy's family. She's, like, the only one out of all of them, I believe, that hasn't had a family introduced. Like, no parents That's right, anything. that's right, yeah. You know, Twilight's parents are still alive. We've seen a bit of Rainbow Dash's father. We know what happens to Applejack's. We know 
Well, we've seen Pinky's family. We don't know too much about them. Or we don't know, like, especially like her sisters. We don't know what's going on with the right, sisters. Right, right, right. So I'd like to see those two at least. And we've know. definitely been introduced to uh, Rarity's parents. Yeah, and they're still alive too. But the only other one that's in mystery is Fluttershy. So that would be pretty cool. Right, exactly. And Scootaloo, but you know. Definitely, like, definitely. I want to see. A, I want to see an answer resolved to Scootaloo. Even if it's just a mention. Yeah, because even like you said, just one word and the whole, you know. The whole canon will change. Um, I've said this in season th well, I've, I believe I wrote this on a, uh, a blog post on FIM Ficker or Divine Art, I can't remember which. But I stated this in season three, and obviously it didn't happen. So I'm going to state it once again. I would like to see the Crusaders get their cutie marks. You know, cause that's, yes, uh, yes, <laughs> that's a big topic I would like to see. Or, as we were discussing earlier, which would be good. Instead of all three of them getting at the same time, uh, one of them getting the cutie mark. That was first. actually that was actually a very good. Uh, that was a point that I had brought up in a uh, in a discussion I was in. Um, what would happen if one of them got it, got their cutie marks? Um, I would believe you would have a lot of material to work with. DHX would have a lot of material to work with, um, because you then will have. The possibility of animosity to it, to mm -hmm. who to the recipient, um, you will have jealousy. Yeah, and you would you. What if the remaining two started to shun, uh, shun the outsider out? You know, or uh, the recipient do the opposite. Will start to sh stray away from the other two. So definitely that that would have a lot of. Uh, story behind it if they if something like this was to happen and even if they don't do that just the idea of the three of them getting them at the same time would be a good episode why because then it would answer the big question that a lot of us ask at one point or another <laughs> what if the crusaders got their cutie marks you know what happens next you know what are they going to do are they just going to separate are they going to remain good friends is the cutie mark crusaders clubhouse going to be abandoned you know it just leaves that kind of questioning yeah yeah one one theory i was going to say is that um in in the in their uh talks that they've had they would said that uh, the cutie mark crusaders are going to help others get their cutie marks in their quest to get their cutie marks so even if yeah, one theory that extra. One one theory I have is that even if all three had gotten their uh, cuter marks, there are still a lot of uh, fillies and children who did not get their cuter marks yet. And I, another that would be another good episode story. Um, the three would actually go and help someone else get their cuter mark. Yeah. Um, just uh, how much time we have? Uh, we're kind of running out of time again. <laughs> I have to get a new camera. This is ridiculous. All right, so we'll be right back after one last word from our sponsor. Ho hum. And we're back. You know who we are, so I don't need to introduce us again. <laughs> um, picking up where we last left off, um, as far as what we expect to see in season four. Uh, one thing that I want to see, and it's been brought up. It was like on the Equestria, da Equestria Daily. I oh, can't speak. Uh, it was brought up in a poll, and everybody agrees. One thing that I would like to see is more of a quest of the world that Equestria is. You know, more of the planet. Yeah, other yeah, places. definitely. Yeah. You know, we got hints of other places like Mustangia, uh, Saddle Arabia. You know, we've gotten hints that there are other places, and I would really like to see you know more about these other places. Not just a, not just Equestria. Just you mean yeah. the world in the in the, yeah. in the downright. Yeah. And, it would also be nice to see the other cities as well. I would like to see Las Pegasus. Yeah, Las Pegasus. That sounds like a good. good I wonder show. if they have casinos there. <laughs> good show. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else you want to? Uh, uh, definitely. I, I wanted to question a few things about you. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You questioned me earlier, and I just, you know, I, I'm like I said, this is pretty much the first time I'm actually meeting you in person. Yeah. So definitely, you know, I've actually been, you know, surfing around on your channel, and you have a massive fan base, by the way. That's <laughs> a do. lot more than what I have. I have only five subscribers. Yeah. I, I mean, I just started, pretty much, but regardless, 
um, you definitely read a lot of these stories. And <laughs> you mean ruin them? <laughs> <laughs> um, you shouldn't be too hard. I mean, I've read, a, I've listened to a couple, and they are pretty well, you know, pretty well read. Um, definitely, you know, I know personally. I personally, I like listening to audiobooks myself. That's why I like, you know, your channel and stuff like that. But what made you, you know, get into reading these on YouTube? Uh, qu quite a bit of backstory on that. Um, like you, I liked audiobooks. You know, sometimes you just don't have the time to sit and read. So you listen to an audiobook, like in the car, or put it like on an iPod or your music player of choice. Um, the same thing kind of applied with fan fiction for me. Sometimes I just didn't have the time to actually sit and read them. Um, but thanks to this fandom, there were people who read these stories, and I would just like to sit and listen to them. Back when I had my iPod Touch, I would listen to them on my iPod. Now I listen to them on my phone sometimes. Um, a couple of the more popular people that I want to give a big shout out to that helped inspire me to be a reader that I am today. Um, the Bruni that everybody loves, Azka. God, he's he's a he's a gold mine. Him and Mike the Microphone Zero. I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with him. Um, you know, he's more into music nowadays. But every now and then he does a reading and they are just gold. He, those the two are the main ones that inspired me to want to do readings. Uh, you know, I didn't expect it to blow up this big, even though it's yeah, not yeah. big at all, but, you know, it, that helped push me to say, you know, this is fun. I love doing this, you know. And, well... There you are, yeah. There I am. Now, you definitely have, like I said, you have a massive fan base and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, it's like, and one question that I would like to know is, like, what do you think is the reason why you know, you have grown in popularity um, or throughout the years. Yeah, truthfully, I think it's because people have run out of videos to watch on YouTube. That, <laughs> that, that's my mentality. But what I feel, you know, if I really dug deeper than that, it would be because I'm, I read the stories that most people don't, mostly because of length. You know, a lot of people don't really read the stories that I've read because they were very long. Um, you take stories like Love's a Dragon, that was very long, but it yeah, was a very read, great story. I listened to that one as well. Um, same thing with stories like The Sweetest Gem, um, that was also a pretty long story, even though it's like only like 10 or 11 chapters, but it's very, very long. No one would read it, and I guess that's another thing that inspired me to read, because I would give requests to readers, and they would say they would read them, but then they don't, and or they would just turn me down right away because it was long. So I decided I would read the stories that I would like read or to hear online that read and, you, you know. You might as well, like you said, if you, the best way to do it is to do it yourself then, so right. to speak. Exactly. <laughs> um, another question, you know, like I said, have been, has been circulating around. Um, you definitely have the stories that you've read and you definitely try and uh you know change the uh the character's uh pitch you mm -hmm. know and voice yeah very well and honestly that's pretty much what got me into uh voice acting um now do you plan on like you know doing the same thing you know as far as that goes or do you plan to like change things around you know or just stayed pretty much the same thing, the well, same way? for right now, I plan for it to stay the same way, only because I don't have the software that I need to make it better. So that's kind of why everything is quick, it's like quick and on the spot. You know, I quickly change voices on the dime. I don't have, like, the fancy equipment to record a certain line, and then I can alter it and make it better, or anything like that. Right, right. I guess that's why, I guess that's pretty much why you hired me, you know, to try and change the dynamic of it. Yeah, because there are some voices that I know I can't do. And even when I tried, it's either my voice just gave out or it just didn't sound good. I mean, right, right. Certain voices, and I admit, certain voices I don't try. Like my Spike voice, I don't try with that. I make it sound like a younger me. Right, yeah. So where, like, my voice sounds like this. I make Spike's voice sound like this, you know. It's kind of like that. It's a, yeah. With me, I've been doing you know, voices for God knows how many, I guess probably since I was young, old enough to uh, copy, you know, television shows and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I could definitely do a lot of uh, 
voices as far as that goes. Yeah, and it would be a really, really big help. And that's why yeah, I yeah. asked you to join. That's right. Um, pretty much, that's pretty much really what I wanted to just talk about. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this is completely unscripted, guys, so you have to, like, excuse us. Oh, uh, that, that was another thing. I just looked, I just looked at one of your pictures. Um, what's with the Sonic and Rarity thing? Ah, the infamous question. Everyone at one point has asked me this. There's a huge, long backstory behind that, so I'll just try to give you an abridged version. Um, working on a crossover fic. Uh, crossover fic? Yeah, a crossover fanfic. Um, with various series, you know, not just ponies and whatever, whatever. But it was multiple. Uh, when I started it, I wanted to explore uh, cross-series or franchise shipping. So obviously, the oh first, boy, oh first, boy. first one I wanted to ship, the first one that came to mind was Sonic, obviously, and I decided, all right, who are we going to ship him with? All I right. would, you would think that it would be uh, uh, Rainbow Dash, but I guess that's not the, the um, direction you've chose. Uh, it was going to be. Uh, I this, the first, that was the first thing that came to mind, Sonic and Rainbow Dash. But you know, I went on Divine Art and I started looking at different art, and I saw that there was already a popular. Uh, you know, fan the basic on it, and as much as I wanted to do it, I just knew that I would just be another face in the cloud or crowd. Excuse me. Well, uh, I guess you could say clouds. Yeah, we can say clouds. Uh, and I said, you know, I want to do something different. You know, I want to think outside the box a little bit. Sometimes opposites attract. Yeah, opposites always attract. The laws of physics will tell you that. And I felt who would be the exact opposite of Sonic, and obviously Rarity came to mind. Not only that, but she was she's my favorite pony of lot of all of them. Right, right. Um, so when I came across the idea, what about Sonic and Rarity? I decided, you know, let me look on Divine Art. Let me look on see if there is a fan base backing this. And when I looked, I was shocked to see that there was nothing, no art, no stories. No so ground definitely, you ch tried to change the dynamic of everything. Yes, and as much as I wanted to say no to that because there was no fandom behind it. I also decided, you know, let's do it. It's new territory. I can do it. I'm the first to do this. And right, right. so that's why I'm constantly showing Sonic and Rarity. That's why I support Sonic and Rarity because this is my territory. You know, I don't want to sound like a jerk when I say that, but this is my territory. I it's created what, it's, this. It's what you started. <clears throat> yes, I created this. And it's slowly catching on. It's catching on. I got people telling me that they like the idea. You know? Well, like I said, opposites <coughs> attract, and definitely it attracts more ideas. Yes, it does. All right, we're one last time. We're almost out of time. I need a new camera. So, just an, one last word from our sponsor, and we'll be right back. Peanut butter crackers. And we're back for the hopefully in the last time. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I need a new camera. I I know there's a way to fix this. I just don't know what it is. All right. So, is there anything else that you wanted to? Uh, add about season four or anything else i definitely want to uh tell you people you know out there um we are heading into a um like i said a new season and with new territory comes uh new opinions um i would definitely like to hear less animosity towards us you know other people's uh opinions because uh a lot of opinions were thrown out uh, when Equestria Girls came out, when Magical Mystery Cure came out. Yeah. And a lot of us were, I was, it was almost as if a clear defined line was, you know, separating, you know, us as far as the Brony fandom goes. And definitely, I don't want that, let's try and faint, you know, rub out that line this time. We all have our definitely, you know, different uh, opinions, and let's try to respect each other this time. You know, I definitely had been uh, rebuted for my opinions, but I've never rebuted others. So I would definitely like, you know, that we all, uh, you know, go back to our original, uh, our original motto of uh, love and tolerance uh, when we come into this new fan, this new uh, season. Yeah, I kind of learned my lesson from season three, 
you know, when I first watched the episodes of season three, most of them I didn't like. You know, it was just felt so, you know, it didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. But I guess as time progressed and rewatching it again and again, you know, the parts that I thought were bad became good, and the parts that I thought were good became better. So and that's why I'm not really jumping into total negativity like I did with season three right, or right. season four. So that's why I'm looking at it with a better outlook as opposed to what I used to do. You know, I learned my lesson from that. Yeah. Another thing is also I am definitely looking forward to more uh, discussions that I'm on. Um, definitely, um, I know a lot of my uh, supporters. I've only have five of them. <laughs> um, I only have a lot of uh, airsoft videos right now. Um, but definitely, I have promised uh, once uh, season four got started, I will definitely be doing my own, uh, you know, thoughts and uh, you know reviews on episodes as we go along. Yeah, I planned on doing the same thing with my channel as well. Yeah. Definitely, I would, you know, I would definitely like to be uh, included in, um, in those things as well. Yes, maybe like once in a while, you and I can uh, sit and we can have a talk. Exactly, know, right. Like we're doing now. You know, uh, there's one last thing I wanted to bring up. Oh, oh, yeah, it was that you're looking forward to more discussions. I, myself, being more on the creative side of the fandom, is looking forward to more, like, artwork and music and... A lot of like the animations and stuff you know that's something that i'm really looking forward to mm -hmm. as well because with with a new season comes new material exactly like i said even you even say like that you know i don't just do uh reviews and uh you know you know thoughts and you know the the, the philosophy behind these episodes um i'm also in the process of writing um two major uh fan fictions um, definitely that I hope to get done, you know, by the, the end of the year, at least one of them, you yeah. know, definitely do that. But definitely I am look, I am definitely, you know, heading into like a creative, uh, you know, atmosphere. Um, uh, like I said, even me doing, you know, participating in these, uh, voiceover acting, you know, projects, um, that's definitely a creative side, you know, that's definitely straying from what I'm usually used to. Yeah, just a little word from advice from like a, uh, <clears throat> a veteran writer, just not to make promises that you can't keep. Oh, exactly. Yeah, because I've made, anyone can vouch for it that I've made deadlines, I've made promises that certain things were going to get done, and then, you know, things happen and they just can't. Well, let's clarify, I didn't say any specific date. I know, but I'm just saying, you know, it, when you start releasing your stories, you know, just try not to make too many promises that you can't keep. Exactly. Well. Right. Noted. All right. Well, I guess we've covered about everything. So, any closing remarks? Not so much, but as usual, um, what I like to say at the end of my videos is, guys who, uh, I don't know if any of your, uh, your uh, you know, uh, subscribers play Airsoft, but if they do, play safe. Yep, a link to his channel for all of you airsofters out there, if there are any. A link to his channel will be in the description below. <clears throat> so you can give him a, a like and a subscribe now and then, and, you know, show him your support, because he is also working with me. Well, it's happened again, Lit Every Pony. You've wasted another chunk of your life listening to me. I hope you have enjoyed what? the... Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Why, do you, why do you say that you waste, waste a chunk of their lives? Well, that's just how I feel. I mean, come on, look how long this video is going. I mean, <laughs> I mean you think they'd find something else better to watch? You gotta have more optimism. <laughs> People like your videos, and you should, and you should be proud of that. At yeah. least it's better than me. All I have is five subscribers. Yeah, well, that's kind of how I... I have a screwed up mindset, so uh, that's just how I perceive it, you know. Whatever sinks your boat. Yeah, exactly. All right, so wasted another perfectly good chunk of your life listening to me. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I hope that you give my co-reader, Dad Airsoft Brony, uh, your support like you've given me. So, <clears throat> when the episodes come, we will each be doing our own reviews, and every now and then we'll be doing a review together, if, you know, time allows. If, and, you know, both him and I are going to be working on stories very soon. You know, we're which yep. I'm very excited to be part of. Yep, because I have stories that I'm personally working on, and we have stories that 
we are going to work on together. So you can keep a good look out for those in the near future. So until next time, the one and only Dark Shadow here, signing off.